Hello there guys and thanks for joining me today on another Space Engineers video. It's been a long time and I do apologize for that as I let you know a little earlier on. Obviously we've had the uh, yeah the holiday uh, weeks, we had Christmas and New Year's Eve and I haven't been able to do much Space Engineers. And I'm actually very excited to take you along for what will actually be my very first go at the new procedurally generated worlds. I'm actually loaded in a world right now with the procedurally generated stuff going on. You know, there's asteroids all around me and I'm most excited to just go and travel around and see if we can find some really cool ships. So I'm going to take you along for a time lapse and uh, yeah, fly through some of these things. Now in front of me, you see the uh, uh, assault bomber called Galar. It's from JD Horks and this is actually available in the exploration update as are all of the other things that we're going to find, right? Because these are all player submitted things. And uh, I also want to take a look at the in-game programming with you. Something that is way beyond uh, beyond anything I could do. But it's uh, definitely something that's exciting and uh, mainly for what I would consider, uh, you know, the mission making, the, the setting up uh, an adventure map type thing. So I'm very excited to try that out anyway. So I think we should just pick a direction here and keep going. And I'll speed it up for you because I have heard it is very uh, hard to find something. And it should be in space. So I'm actually quite happy about that, I think. Now, I think I'm just going to go in a random... Ooh, maybe I think I may actually see something right in front of our crosshair now. Let's just aim there. We'll go full speed. And then we'll just uh, let her go. So let's see how this goes. So I didn't actually expect it to be this difficult to find any of the other ships, but I found a couple of the uh, actual cargo ships, the ones that are traveling around, and that's it. I have yet to find a mobile, or stationary, sorry, a stationary ship. Now, I, you know, I had been warned. People have been saying it's very difficult to find something, but something kind of told me, I, I just felt like I was going to find something earlier. Yeah, and unfortunately we didn't. So, yeah, that's a bit anticlimactic, maybe. You know, maybe we'll find something while we're actually out here traveling around. Uh, in the meanwhile, though, I will talk to you about the in-game programming. I'm excited about it because of the, uh, the, you know, the potential it has. I do not have any uh, programming knowledge. My brother, for example, does, and when I told him this, he got very excited. Uh, and suddenly the game had in it was interesting to him because he doesn't actually play Space Engineers. Um, and actually, I'll show you how this works while we're while we're just traveling around here. You know, maybe we'll get lucky. So, if I open the menu here, uh, we will find a programmable block. This is what it looks like on the side of the ship. There, you see the little little monitor in here. Oops. And basically it can hold a script and that is pretty cool. If you click on it, it's basically like a, a timer block, you know, you can edit and you'll find a programming screen here, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, it's uh, C sharp. That's the programming language. And yeah, it can do all sorts of tricks. Now again, I can't program, so that means that I have downloaded something. That's another cool thing. It actually allows, well, it has like workshop integration. You can download scripts from the workshop and then load them into your game 
through the yeah the menu in game, which is pretty cool. I'll show you. Where are we? Programmable block. Edit. So you can actually click here on browse the workshop. And you'll see here I've actually put something in there called chip virus. This is a pretty cool script. Uh, this one is from uh, Future Kuchi Ona. It's actually called Virus for Ships. Code name is Shiido. And the cool thing about this is what it does is it actually messes everything up. It turns off ship control. It uh, yeah, it does a lot of things. It uh, 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 makes all of the uh, the tools throw everything into different uh, conveyor systems. It turns off your gyro. It changes the gyro settings even I believe. And basically, it opens all the doors, unlocks them, uh, disables your inertia dampeners. Basically, it's a really cool thing uh, to use, especially for a large ship. Most probably, you know, you're trying to uh, s yeah sabotage someone's system what you would do is just put that virus into their system basically like upload the virus and then uh yeah you could uh, ruin someone's day to say it lightly now, i want to show you how that works i actually haven't Ooh, what is that what is that what is that is that something or is that just part of the asteroid i mean i I've been flying around thinking I see something in the distance everywhere, but really there just isn't anything. It's very addictive though. Procedurally generated worlds can become very addictive because you keep thinking you see something on the horizon and it'll drive you that little bit further and it'll drive you to say, okay, let's just look behind this asteroid and then the next one and then the next one. And I must admit, it is a bit more intriguing than I expected it would be. And that is definitely a good thing. Uh, I lost what I was looking at. That's another danger. But again, disappointment. Oh, 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 what is that? What's in that middle of that donut? More asteroid. Something people have been mentioning is that there's way too many uh, donut asteroids. I agree. Uh, but I'm, I'm convinced that their procedurally generated system, the system in charge and responsible for generating whatever comes up next, is a work in progress. Anyway, let's try that virus out. Let's just uh, program a block and click run. Oh gosh, what happened? I'm in a camera all of a sudden. Okay, so yeah, it, it disabled my control. Dampeners are still turned off, which basically means I am inoperable now. That is pretty damn cool. <gasps> oh my god, look what it did. It actually renamed everything. Oh wow, that is impressive. Now that is a way to ruin someone's day. That is good. That is good. I mean, I wouldn't even know what my cockpit is now. Check that out. Inertia dampeners, control thrusters, that must be the cockpit, right? No, apparently not. Oh my god. I wonder if I will fix this before we actually crash into something. Probably should. This is my cockpit, is it not? Show on HUD. Let's see. Ah, gyro overwrite was enabled as well. And another one there. So now does it work? Yes, we have control, but no thruster input. What happened to all my thrusters? We're actually still named. Oh wow, it actually does uh, an override. It actually will steer you away from wherever you're going through this override. Oh yeah, I just regained control. That is incredible. As you can see, it'll take you a while to reset yourself there. That is pretty damn good. I, I'm actually excited to see what you would come up with. You know, playing with a friend, hacking a terminal, and uploading this virus. That is incredible. Just imagine, right? Let me see if I can find a program or block in this list. Imagine you're just in there, you start typing away a code, and uh, 
Yeah, you kind of mess up someone's day through this little... I think it's cool. I, I just really think it has potential. And again, I, I would love to see what you come up with. Definitely. I like this ship. It's pretty good. It's a bit damaged from that first collision. But that's okay. So I was going to do a mod review video as usual, of course. Um, as you were expected of me. Or expecting from me. But I didn't do one because I just wanted to take a really good look at the uh, in-game programming as well as the procedurally generated worlds. And yeah, I'm not disappointed. I'll be honest with you. Um, I do have a bit of a problem with space engineers at the moment where I just, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm bored so much, but I don't know what to do in game. And I end up not starting the game up because I don't want to build yet another spaceship or I don't want to mine yet another asteroid. Um, and you got to think to yourself, I mean, let's be, let's look at this in a bit more of a, a critical sense. What has happened now that we have procedurally generated worlds? Because, sure, you can keep going and you don't run out of world to mine. But it is just more asteroids. You get some ships that you can take apart if you find them and you can add resources. But what new thing is there really to do? I wonder, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something new for Space Engineers to throw at me. Maybe that's me being very demanding though, and I would like to know what you think. I'd like to know if you feel Space Engineers is complete just the way it is now, you know? Does it have everything that it should have to be a game? Uh, and all it needs is just, you know, further improve in, uh, improving on the things that we have? Or are you as well looking for something that you're saying to yourself, okay, something needs to happen in this world. What is all this debris over here? This will be the last little bit that we take a look at. So maybe we have good timing. Whatever I'm looking at, it is far away and it looks a lot more red than an asteroid would. What am I looking at here? I can imagine, I just realized, you know, when I was traveling around these asteroids, uh, it's very scary to lose where you're going, to, to keep track of what direction you're going at. And it just makes it That doesn't look like an asteroid. That does not look like an asteroid. Yeah, it is more asteroid. <sighs> frustration, frustration. Anyway, like I was saying, yes, yeah, some objects look very far away, but they're just really tiny and close, uh, which is pretty cool because you can end up accidentally hitting an asteroid when you don't mean to. So that is pretty cool too. Anyway, this is where I will wrap up this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, I will try and get some cool mod review stuff to you very so very soon. I'll see when I can get myself to uh, to take a look at it. In the meanwhile, I hope you've been enjoying War Thunder as well. And uh, I'm uh, planning to take a look at one of the very, very first MMORPGs I took a look at. Uh, now this will, for some of you, be a game that's way too old for you. For some, you may think I've never heard of it. Uh, when I first played my online game, it was 2002. This is when I first started to learn English, considering English is obviously not my first language. Um, and the game is called Anarchy Online. Let me know what you think about it. Have a look at it. It's very old. And I will be taking a look at it once more. So, yeah, stay tuned for that as well. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.